I believe that um, the animals have a place. There are family, there are our relations, all animals. And shooting one just for fun is not what we were taught as children. Few Americans have ever heard of a practice called wildlife killing contests. And this is a practice where predators, particularly coyotes, bobcats, foxes, even wolves are targeted. The person who kills the most is awarded a gun, a belt buckle, a ribbon. Things like this should not be taking place. And these animals that they kill in a mass slaughter are animals that control the populations of rats and mice and ground squirrels. A lot of these killing contests occur on our public lands, our, particularly our federal public lands. Our system doesn't give a voice to many of the citizens uh, and definitely not to future generations. So our governments have to be trustees. They have to be held accountable for how wildlife are used uh, and not used. It is never right to slaughter a species for fun, for contest, out of an ancient bloodlust. The majority of my generation is deeply disturbed by the idea that our elders seem incompetent and that these contests would even be considered to continue. I do not understand why some people think they have the right to kill these intelligent, important animals. We're depleting the ecosystem of all the components that lead to a healthy ecosystem and a healthier environment for us to live in, as well as our farmed animals. The whole idea just kind of turns my stomach, mostly because of the mentality that it represents. We're fooling ourselves if we think that that's a, a valuable predator management technique. If we have to exterminate all the native species to ranch, then we probably shouldn't be ranching. When you take something out of balance, something else is going to happen. And when you exterminate something, now we have to try to save it. And sometimes that might not work. And then we're going to lose these beautiful animals. These beautiful, beautiful animals that have just as much right to be here as we do. promoting coexistence between human beings and wildlife. The fate of wildlife depends on it, and so does the fate of the environment and the ecosystems in which those wildlife thrive. We can't live without them. They can live without us if we don't kill them. Most of these contests involve the act of luring in the animals using either handheld devices or electronic calling devices, which uh, imitate the sound of a prey animal that's injured or uh, an injured pup or, or um, a potential mate. The species that are often killed are considered pests or varmint by state agencies. Uh, which is a really derogatory term to have for any wildlife. And what it does is it promotes the idea that these animals can be killed uh, at will, anytime, with no consequences and no ethical considerations as well. There's no monitoring. They have no idea of how many animals are being killed and what the ecological consequences of the killing may be and how that may affect other um, uh, wildlife species that may depend on those animals to one degree or another as part of the whole complex web of life.
Killing contests in North America really started in the late 1950s, and in 1957, the first World Varmint Calling Championship took place in Chandler, Arizona. This was where essentially hunters from Arizona, Texas, California came together to target particularly coyotes. These killing contests are not just a Western phenomenon. They actually occur in many Eastern states, New York, Pennsylvania, Vermont, uh, Maine, all have killing contests. It really hit home at the end of 2014 when we discovered the dumped carcasses of 39 coyotes near Las Cruces, New Mexico. And these were the victims of a killing contest held by a group that we later learned holds these contests almost uh, on every weekend. We're frequently asked, well, who's supporting these killing contests? What, what lobbying groups are behind it? And really, it's often the ag industry that is promoting these as a necessary tool to reduce conflicts between livestock and predators. I'm here today to make the same point that I've made in the past um, with the request that the regulation be amended to recognize the potential challenges that it creates for dealing with rodents that are damaging crops. I'd like to see us look at managing, or, or really it's managing us. So we, we call it wildlife management. We're managing us from limitless, what I think of as slaughter. We oppose the prohibition of removing contests for coyotes in particular, but all, all contests. Uh, when the population will allow those contests or those hunts to go on. I've been a wildlife biologist now for 40 some years and I really don't see the point in hunting predators. If left alone, predators can regulate their own numbers. In fact, we probably would have fewer predators on the land uh, if they weren't hunted than we do if they are hunted. And so those who think they're solving some problem by killing predators, like lowering uh, the impact they would have on livestock, for example, really don't understand the ecology and the biology of predators. So there's two ways that predators manage to keep their numbers naturally low, and that's through defending a large territory for a given family group, and they actually are mean to other predators that might of the same species that might come into their territories. And the other way is that within a family group, they actually suppress the reproduction and the production of pups within the group because only the alpha pair breeds. And even though there are other members of the pack that are capable of breeding, they are behaviorally uh, suppressed by the alpha animals in the pack from not breeding. So they are better regulators of their own numbers than anything we could do through management or through killing contests. The U.S. public trust doctrine says that the U.S. government is accountable to the public interest in all wildlife to make sure that none of the uses impair the trust asset. In other words, none of the uses severely jeopardize the survival of wildlife that belong to all of us. One of the uh, problems with killing contests is that they are uh, often antithetical to the basic missions uh, statements of a lot of fish and game agencies, which suggest that they promote uh, fair chase, suggest that they uh, are against the waste of wildlife. Well, when I first became land commissioner in New Mexico, I was confronted with what were called rattlesnake roundups. And this is when people went out and just absolutely harvested every snake they possibly could within a good, given area. And uh, oftentimes they did not treat them humanely and they just destroyed the, the ecological balance in those areas. When I learned about that, uh, I said, heck no, you're not gonna do that on state trust lands because those uh, snakes are critically important to the, the health and stability and the resilience of, of our lands. Some of the problems and challenges we encounter are when narrow interest groups claim authority over wildlife, when they want to make all the decisions and the broad public interest isn't being served. 
And then we have a problem if the government trustees accept these narrow, private, special interest claims on wildlife. One of the things that bothers me most about these wildlife killing contests is what it says about our country, the ethics uh, of just destroying wildlife with no regard, and that we treat animals with such cavalier attitude. We live in a time when we recognize animals as sentient beings that have intrinsic worth. And just as we have banned cockfighting and dogfighting as a nation, it's time that we ban wildlife killing contests and bounties. I look at wildlife killing contests as a uh, exercise in cruelty. Why would you want to kill creatures just for the fun of it? I mean, these, these, we're talking about mammals, animals that have a pretty high level of consciousness. They're aware of what's happening to them. And that means they suffer when uh, they're, they're uh, tortured or killed, and certainly when you go out of your way to hurt an animal that has awareness and has consciousness, it's just uh, repugnant. When there are killing contests and things like that, there's not any, I don't think there's any reverence or any respect or honor being given to the animal that, again, in that instance, is being taken. And the part of that that really hits home and really resonates with us as Native people is in the same token, we've lived that ourselves. We've been that coyote. We've been that predator. We've been that misunderstood scourge of the earth. And it's something that we're still dealing with. Um, you know, a lot of times people think that those are days gone by and it's not like that anymore. But uh, we know better. It tends to promote an outlaw mentality among some hunters, and that uh, outlaw mentality then uh, is, uh, you know, can get transferred to other wildlife besides just the, the predators that they're killing. In fact, people who participate in wildlife killing contests are at odds with the majority of hunters and wildlife managers who believe that killing an animal for no justifiable purpose or reason is not only unsportsmanlike, but completely unjustified. There's really not much of sporting at all about these events because in some cases, these electronic devices are set up at some distance from where the hunter has uh, taken a stand. Well, the coyote has absolutely no awareness that the hunter is there and, and they're actually be going off to find the source of this call and there's nothing sporting about that. All the things that most people think of when they think of hunting, they think of the guy out there getting his one deer a year and putting the meat in his freezer to feed his family. This is not what it's about at all. This is people going out and to try to win prizes, simply kill as many coyotes or badgers or raccoons or skunks or opossums or whatever they can find. And then they take the bodies and they dump them in a pit. I find that repulsive. I just don't think that people who do this for fun know what they're doing. This is the animal's land just as well as it is ours. And they have their specific place to take care of things as we take care of things. We need to learn to live in balance, to be one with each other, this earth, to take care of it, because this world is crumbling. This earth is not being taken care of. The animals are not being taken care of. When all this happens, we're going to pay for it.
These killing contests, which permit unlimited killing, not only impact individual animals, but really disrupt the entire ecological balance, particularly the predator-prey relationships. And these consequences are not limited just to the ecosystem where these hunts take place. They're like throwing a stone in a pond. The ripples spread and spread to other ecosystems. All these carnivores, the bobcat, the coyote, the red fox, and the wolf, and the cougar, the mountain lion, they all have their particular niches to maintain the health of ecosystems. And when they are disrupted, when they are exterminated, ecosystems change. When people are temporarily successful at exterminating native carnivores, you often get explosions in other species. Um, there's lots of stories about explosion of rodent populations in, in places. Sometimes you get overpopulation of their main prey species. For example, in our neighborhood, the white-tailed deer population just went crazy about eight years ago, and we started seeing a much increased incidence of uh, a couple of diseases and abortion causing diseases and other diseases and just uh, smaller sizes and, and uh, poorer health amongst ungulates in the area. When responding to predators that have killed livestock, everything that scientists know about how to deal with that problem says that being targeted and specific is important. You have to be targeted on, on, the, on the land where that took place, on the farm where it took place. You have to be there within a few days or a week at most of the event taking place. You have to be focused on the actual individuals that have caused the problem, the individual coyotes or wolves or whatever the predator may have been. And you have to deal with the problem in that way. Um, but wildlife killing contests don't have any of that targeted nature at all. Wildlife killing contests are in the truest sense of the word indiscriminate. And uh, they're not focused on, on the problem is what it amounts to being and so it's it's killing in vain it's 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 killing f for no good reason at all my family has been involved in agriculture as far back as we trace our family tree and we fully understood that we wouldn't succeed uh, we wouldn't survive much less thrive unless we treated our animals with real respect and if we had a problem with predators we had to deal with that specific animal and uh, the key was to do it with real respect uh, because those animals also really reduced uh, the rabbit population and the rodent population that, that our animals were competing with. So having a good balance is really the key. In our own experience, the overall lesson has been if you have coyotes around, you want to develop a relationship with the coyotes that live there and to just go around killing them basically precludes that possibility. There's no justification for this other than family bonding, which could be done over something healthy and wholesome, and the cheap exploitation of human power and weaponry over defenseless animals. That's not sport, that's just massacre. in Northern California by the McLeod River coming off of Mount Shasta. We've been there about 6,000 years as far as the scientists can just decipher for us. You know, there was a bounty put on us. Our population on the McLeod River decreased from around 20,000 Winnemowinty people down to 395 in 1910. We are still struggling to recover. We are only 125 Winnemum Wintu people now. In watching the bounties and watching the contests that are going on and the determination of what is allowable, and the wolves no longer exist in our area, and the coyotes are threatened all the time.
Project Coyote uses every tool in the toolbox to counter these lobbies and to try to bring an end to killing contests. We use public education, we use the media, we use direct petitions of fish and game commissions. We also use litigation when necessary. One thing that people can do is uh, expose the sponsors, put pressure on the sponsors. Sometimes uh, public pressure on a sponsor can cause them to withdraw because they may not be aware of the depth of public opposition to these events. When you find out that there's a killing contest happening someplace in your state or region, the best thing to do is to promote the uh, public awareness of it by letters to the editor, calling up reporters, letting them know that these contests are happening and that it's a controversy, not everybody's happy about it, writing and calling state legislators, calling the fish and game departments in each state and letting them know that you don't support them as well. We learned in 2013 that a large coyote killing contest was going to take place in Modoc County and several other northern counties. We petitioned the California Fish and Game Commission and not only raised serious concerns about a killing contest that was targeting coyotes, but also concerns for this one gray wolf that was trying to eke out an existence in its native home of California. Once we learned about this coyote killing contest, we looked into their prevalence throughout the state and the rules and regulations that allowed them. We actually had some regulations and a statute on the books that restricted killing contests, but loopholes had been added over the years that essentially allowed the killing of coyotes and bobcats and foxes and other species. We identified what needed to be done to close those loopholes. And that started a public hearing process. Tens of thousands of people wrote to the commission and said, we want an end to this. We want you to close the loopholes. And about 18 months later, the Fish and Game Commission finally did in December of 2014. Here in Van Nuys, we took action to clarify that offering prizes or rewards or any form of inducement for a wildlife killing contest in the state of California is unlawful. We feel that wildlife killing contests are an anachronism. They are uh, antiquated and they're inconsistent with our understanding of the role of predators and other species in ecosystems today. The killing contest is not related to threat management. There is a significant difference between being a hunter and being someone who would even be interested in being in a contest where you kill every game and then you get over. I find that beyond comprehension of horror. Now it's in place and it's understood, the rule is clarified that there is no prizes or inducements that can be offered as part of a killing contest against uh, fur-bearing mammals and non-game mammals. So it's a really exciting time because um, we're hoping to move this forward and work with the Wildlife Resource Committee and updating and modernizing predator policies in California to reflect what the majority of Californians want with their wildlife, which is for it to be protected and not be used as living targets. Project Coyote has been among the leaders in this effort to persuade our commission and wildlife managers across the country to begin taking on board modern understanding, scientific understanding of the role of predators in ecosystems and bringing our management of these species up to standard, up to speed with the science. Efforts are underway in several states now, including New Mexico, Idaho, Nevada, Oregon, to target killing contests. We uh, ended up getting a bill passed through the New Mexico Senate by a, a strong, overwhelming bipartisan majority. We had a, a coalition of conservation groups and animal rights groups. It was very effective. It included Southwest Environmental Center, Project Coyote, Sierra Club, Wild Earth Guardians, and Animal Protection of New Mexico. And a very important thing that people can do is bear witness and just any time they become aware of these contests to bring them to light, to bring them to attention of the, of the media and of their networks. And, and we do that enough, these things will be banned. I see this effort to try to raise people's awareness and keep landscapes functioning is part of our collective realization that we're going to share the fate of this planet, whether we like it or not, with, with animals ranging from bacteria to megafauna.
We have an idea of the integrity of nature and how the Creator built this perfect jigsaw puzzle. We don't say don't kill, ever, don't hunt, ever. But we ask people to be mindful of the relationship between humans and wild animals and to know that both were made by the Creator and both have a job to do. And one of the human's jobs is as a steward of wilderness and the animals that we have the power to kill, but we should have the wisdom not to kill. What I found is that if you talk to people and you most importantly listen to people, you can find that common ground that ensures that uh, people have the knowledge they need to be able to succeed on the land. Because we're here for such a short period of time in each one of our lives that unless we look at the big picture over the long period of time and understand that we can't claim that we have knowledge unless we understand the real effects of that knowledge on communities and real people, on plants and animals that we share this planet with, uh, we, we won't have, have done our jobs. And I am certain with public awareness that these uh, killing contests will uh, eventually be outlawed and banned. Your voice matters. In California, we had tens of thousands of people contact the commission calling for a ban. It takes grassroots mobilization. It takes individuals speaking out. Join the pack and make your voice heard because it does make a difference. Thank you.